Is Vegan Gains a liar? Did he set me up for failure? Did he mislead me? Kind of. But I don't really have any regrets about the live stream. I just regret not doing a makeup check because the only comments on that video are, oh, he's wearing makeup. So we'll do one at the end of this video for you guys. But, you know, this whole premise of this, I was very upset with because we only really argued two points and I wasn't prepared because he didn't link me these studies ahead of time. And it literally took me about 10 minutes of research on my own time to debunk these, which, you know, under the stress of the live stream and him talking to me, I wasn't able to find this information too easily. Uh, at, oh, I wasn't able to find it at all at the time. So the first point we really argued back and forth on for about an hour was atherosclerosis and heart disease in ancient populations. It was pretty much this study done on four groups of people on the mummies that said, okay, they had atherosclerosis, and vegan gains used it as a blanket statement to say, oh, all indigenous groups, all hunter-gatherers have atherosclerosis, which is completely crazy blanket statement. And he said, oh, the diets of these people didn't matter, and he didn't know what they were, and I found this. They followed a diet rich in vegetables and seafood, free from saturated fats, therefore with low risk of developing atherosclerosis, and they were intensely physically active, so by all standards, why did they have atherosclerosis? Well, they didn't because the anatomy can be strongly altered by post-mortem events. The walls of the vessel might collapse, dehydrate, and have the appearance of calcific thickening. For this reason, the x-ray CT pattern alone is insufficient and diagnosis should be supported by histological study, which is like dissecting it, which they didn't do. So basically that study is dog shit, as I said it was, and that's why I made the joke. Let's take a plane over to Egypt and go look at some mummies. I thought it was completely ridiculous, but apparently no one else did. And I also linked a study showing it is speculated that the Messiah are protected from their atherosclerosis by physical fitness, which causes their coronary vessels to be capacious. And that was the study I linked, but I also found two more studies re uh, on this research. Low levels of serum cholesterol and no evidence of arterial sclerotic heart disease in the Messiah. And another study showing that they are nearly free from atherosclerosis, eating nothing but milk, meat, and blood. So two more studies to prove that point. Now, before we go into the second discussion, which was how heme iron, his idea was that heme iron caused oxidation of LDL, and we touched on the N-nitroso compound thing, which he was he knew way less about that than me. He couldn't bring up the heme iron debate in regards to nitrates and stuff because I would have smoked him on that, and I kind of did. Like, I, I shouldn't have said it early on that I knew what that was and explained it so easily early on. So I kind of maybe, the one thing I had on him, I kind of threw out the window early on. But uh, before we go into these other studies, we have to understand junk science. And Dr. Darren Schmidt did a great video on this last week. I actually watched this. That's why I was upset and calling these studies dog shit because I was like, the relative risk is way too low. And this is why. In adequately designed studies, we can be reasonably confident about big relative risks. Sometimes, we can only be guardedly confident about relative risks estimates of the order of 2.0. Occasionally, we can hardly ever be confident about estimates of less than 2.0. And when estimates are much below 2.0, we are simply out of business. Epidemiologists have only primitive tools, which for small relative risks are too crude to enable us to distinguish between bias, confounding, and causation. And he also spoke about other reasons that studies are invalid is if it's not an observational study we ignore it it's a food questionnaire it's not reliable the relative risk what we just talked about and then the dosing could be wrong which means it could be unrealistic and there could also be something wrong with the method which i don't see here uh, at least to my understanding so let's look at the heme iron studies he linked me first study heme iron intake colorectal cancer french woman Dietary intake was measured by a semi-quantitative food history questionnaire. So that study's out the window. Iron and cancer risk, a systematic review and meta-analysis of the epidemiological evidence. Relative risk, 1.0 to 1.17. Relative risk is too low. We're out of business. Is heme iron associated with risk of coronary disease? Meta-analysis. Relative risk, way too low. Out of business. Dietary iron intake, risk of type 2 diabetes. Relative risks, way too low out of business. Okay, so I'm going to put all those studies in the comments. Just real I'm going to put everything in the comments for you guys. Don't worry about that. But this was the study that he based his whole argument off of that I and he said that heme iron causes oxidation. They didn't use heme iron in this study. They used iron sulfide or something. So I don't know why he was saying that. If I read the study or if he read the study, he would know that. So he lied about literally everything in regards to this heme iron thing. 
he had no clue about heme iron. And the method for this study and the materials are the problem. So they isolated LDL from plasma from four healthy people, and then they took it at 250, I believe this is, what is this, microliters? Uh, yeah, it's a microliter, which is a millionth of a liter. And then I believe this is microgram, which is, microgram, yeah, it's one millionth of a gram. So I'm very unfamiliar with these, these measurements, but FeSO4, which is the iron that they oxidized this LDL within a centrifuge, is iron sulfate. And that has nothing to do with you know, non-heme iron as ferrous sulfate does not interact with heme iron absorption in humans. So these are two very different things. So the iron they used in this study is irrelevant. So this, because of the iron they used, this study is irrelevant. And even if we entertain the idea that it was heme iron, the method they're using of spinning this in a centrifuge in this concentration with this much iron, it, the, it's such an unrealistic amount of iron it would be, I, I think, I could be wrong on this, but to my understanding, the dosing on this is like, it's like the equivalent of eating like 20 steaks a meal. It's insane, a worth of iron. And that's not even, it doesn't matter because it's not heme iron. And then I just showed uh, one study showing that, uh, that young women are usually deficient and they need more heme iron. <clears throat> and then another study showing, you know how iron is important for health all living organisms as it participates in a wide variety of metabolic processes. So, you know, I, as much as I would like to apologize for my performance on it, you know, it could have been a lot worse. And either way, even if I prepared for this, I don't think I would have been prepared. Uh, you know, if he would have linked me the studies ahead of time, this is what would have happened. What did it take me like five minutes to go over all that stuff? So thank you guys for watching. I will link all that stuff in the description. Uh, the Frankie the face stuff, oh, the makeup check. You guys not wear makeup. One day I'm just going to rub some like black stuff on my shirt just to mess with you guys. Uh, so, yeah, just share the video above anything, guys. Hey, follow my Twitter and Instagram. If you follow my Twitter, you'll know someone fairly special is following me for what it's worth. And I'm going to do a live stream next Sunday. And I think I want to do two live streams for both time zones, Europe and the United States. I would like to do like maybe one at noon and one at midnight. Let me know what time zones are good. Maybe I'll just do one super long stream like I did last week uh, because I don't know what would be good for both Europe and American time zones. So thank you guys for watching. Um, and uh, also, yeah, just let me know what other videos you guys would like to see. I almost forgot to give a big shout out to Dr. Darren Schmidt. Thank you so much for that identifying junk science video. Please say hello to him uh, for me, guys. And just you know, watch his videos. Watch that video that I'm going to link in the comments. I watched that last week. It helped me a lot, even though I should have just brought it up to explain the relative risk at the time of the live stream. I didn't think of that.